Hi there. So in this video, what I want to show you is um, uh, effectively the, the joining of, of points to polygons. It's the idea that uh, uh, I've got all this point data on my map and an underlying uh, polygon. Uh, and these underlying polygons are actually uh, sort of local authority areas, local authority boundaries. Uh, and if I just click on one of these local authority districts, <coughs> that's in there, you can see I've got what's this, Brackland, okay, over near Norwich. So I've got this, this boundary, um, and there's, there's, there's a few in here. The points that I've got on top are actually um, uh, what are called event duration uh, uh, monitoring data. So it's storm overflow data uh, from 2022 in England and Wales. So this is data from what are called CSOs, combined so uh, overflows. Uh, and this is a bit of a hot topic at the moment because this is all about uh, discharge or spill into bathing water areas or directly into the sea uh, and into rivers. So all these dots represent some kind of uh, spill or discharge. Um, so if I click on one of these, let's click on, uh, actually let's click on one on the coast. So here you can see that's southern water, that, that dot there. Uh, lots of data about the sewer network um, about what's, this is all public data, by the way. You can download it from the River Trust website. You can just go search River Trust website and download it. So I'm, I'm not showing anything here that's, that's not public. So you can see all this data. So the constituency of Bognor Regis and Little Hampton there. So you've got an idea of, of uh, you know, what, what, what this data is. There's a lot of columns, but I'm actually interested in counted spills. So that's where there's been this discharge, uh, basically of sewage um, into an area. So, so that says 10 on that single point. And if I click on this point over here, what's um, counter spills? So that's two, uh, it says 10. There's already 12 spills within 2022 within that sort of area. So what, are, what do I want to do? I want to be able to shade these polygons. I create a thematic, the whole polygon using the uh, count and the total sum of all the sort of discharge um, uh, spills. So the number of times there was the discharge from CSOs, uh, number of spills um, of sewage um, uh, that was collected, data was collected by Rivers Trust. So how do you do this? Um, and, and indeed, other examples of doing this sort of thing, it, 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 this might be crime data that you want to align with, with polygon um, information like zip codes or postcodes or something. So th this, is, this is a very, very kind of generic standard um, GIS process, but um, it's not totally clear how you do it in QGIS. Um, well, I, I didn't think so originally, so I thought I'd do this just to show you. If you go to uh, the toolbox, so if you just go to processing and toolbox, a quick way as I've shown before, as you can see I've done it before, is I know I'm going to aggregate data. So when I do that, I get the various tools come up. I've shown you that before in toolbox and it's a good way to get cracking on anything you want to do. So I actually want to join attributes by location. Again, that's something that not just pro users will be familiar with, um, uh, you know, in the arc map. Um, so, and, and, and it's a summary, summary that's, good, that's, that's gonna take place. Uh, and it says recently used there because I literally have just executed that. So I click on that, separate window comes up. And what you're uh, looking at choosing here is in the top, join features to, uh, join, join to features in your polygon layer which is, so in this case, it's my local authority districts. Uh, this is 2019, I probably ought to update that really, but it's still pretty good. Um, and it's given the EPSG and stuff. Uh, and and it's features that um, 
in there where, where they contain my point data. So I select my EDM data just by clicking on the bar. So note, this is the usual sort of geometry operations going on here. So if, if this was lines, for example, you would, if and you click contain, then actually you, you'd get, you'd need to have the whole line in, in that polygon. But if it crosses anywhere, you could use intersect. But you can add these together. You can have both um, things like that. So it would slightly alter based on your geometry type. Now, what, what I want to do is kind of do a little test that makes sure that this runs. If you click on the spanner at the top here, you can say limit features just to, I don't know, not even five, to one. Just limit features to one. I want to do a test run basically to make sure I get this right. So we'll leave that. Another item to make to just mention while I'm here is about invalid feature filtering. If you know if it comes across invalid polygons, self-intersecting or what have you, it has problems running the, the, the query, then um, you can decide what you what you want to do there. Um, so I've now just set up I'm just going to pick off just, just one of them. So it's going to look for the first polygon in the in the database and just just execute. Um, I think I'm going to leave everything else and including creating a temporary layer and I'm just going to run that. Runs pretty much instantly because I've only got one record. I'm going to drag the window off this monitor to my other monitor and that's the point about this. This, this window just floats so you can leave it open. You don't have to close it and it's probably wise if you've done lots of settings in here not to close it. So I'll just move it up off the way. And in here, you can see it's created this, this thing called joined layer. And it's got a little sort of bug type icon here because it's in memory. It's not written to a file. Let's just turn off my point and zoom out a bit. See if I can see it immediately. No, okay. Let's zoom to layer. There it is. So I've got this one record. Let's click on it. Because I set it to one, don't forget. You know, I restricted it. And check this out. This is way more data than I expected. So this isn't correct, really. It's not far off, though, because what it's done is just applied all the summary sort of types, uh, you know, mean, re, uh, max, min, all that sort of thing to every single field. And that's not what I want. So it's gone through the whole lot and just created all this. Uh, so I'm not even going to bother with that. So I know my test that I did, which was great, failed. I'm going to remove that there. I'm going to bring this back because now what, what, what we're going to do is is actually with these items here just show you the impact of these because it says fields to summarize but you can see it doesn't really sort of let you click on anything at first it doesn't seem obvious but again it's just the three dots over here. So here I click on the counted spills so that's a number of discharges of surge. So now I've got my field. It's just that one. Now on summaries to calculate, and I do not want to leave empty so it uses all available because we, we just got everything, medians and everything. What I'd like is the sum. So that's the total sum of, of that count figure of, um, of that number of spills. So, uh, but I also want the number of points actually used in, the, in that sum. So I click on count as well. But you can see there's lots of others to use. Um, I'm going to leave that all the same and what I'm going to do is um, I'm still going to leave it just to look through the first one um, but I'm going to write this out to a file called dtemp and I'm going to just call it answer1. I'm going to force it to, to a shape file very deliberately because I want to show you something else. So I'm going to press run. Happens quickly. Move the window off the screen. And there's my answer one. Let's zoom to there. And um, oh, turn that there off. Um, turn the group off then. So, and here it is. And I click. Oh, this is looking good. A lot less data. So I've just got that single. So that's Hartley Pool. Uh, but look what's happened to these two fields down here. They've been truncated. That that just isn't. That they aren't the names of the fields. Uh, and that's because it's a shapefile. 
So I'm going to remove that and because it's a shape file you see you have a limitation in the size of fields, the field names. Um, and that's why really you need to look at using geo packages really. Um, shape files need to be consigned to history to be quite honest. Um, oh, oh sorry, um, the, the geo packages or um, uh, geo, geo database uh, as, as needed, you know databases and stuff. So let's rerun this but we'll change it to Delta one dot gpkg as a geo package. And I think as well, um, I'm going to remove because I know it's just a format. Actually, well, no, let's let's just run it with the one. Let's just run it. It's pretty instant. And there it is. Let's click. And now you see. And now you see it says counted spills count. So that's the number of points in there counter spill sum that's the total of all those values in there so it's now properly named them because it can in a geo package if I just turn on uh, let's just drop this underneath you'll see you see all the dots um, appear so it's that aggregation of all those points uh, in that area okay let's get rid of answer one because now Let's rerun the whole thing. I think I might have closed it actually. Did I cl yeah, I did. I closed my my dialog. That's okay. Um, so, um, look authority, join attributes, my points, and just contain. I'll show you how to save this stuff in a second. Um, and then um, uh, I won't set that. I. There's nothing there. Let's choose the fields again. Counted spills. Could bring in other fields. There's, there's some other ones that are interesting. But I don't want them for the moment. Count and sum. And then let's go back here. And let's do T temp. And answer 3.gpkg. Oh, 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 gpkg. Geo package. Uh, I think that was it. Run that. So now it will um, run through everything. So it takes us a bit longer. One thing to note as well, the geo package is um, it's very fast to write. It's a bit faster than shapefile. Anyway, so let's turn off the dots. And now what we've got is a polygon layer, uh, the, the, the boundaries. And um, But when I click on any of them, I will get spills 437 so it's 437 dots on the map CSO points discharge points um, within that area and the total number of discharges from all those points total number of spills was 9797 so that's a fair few actually and then of course because we've done that whereas before we had a load of points that were all colored now we can go to answer three to my feature layer, go to symbology go to graduated select counted uh, the sum of, of the spills uh, let's just classify you, you, you know you can change all this and and apply it better and there we go so now we've got our hotspots of where these spills took place uh, based on the authority local authority areas you, you'd, you'd want to do a bit of altered classification here there's some big big leaps you know 50 to 366 for example and um, uh, sorry well, yeah, in number of number of points, but there's a what's well, see that that leaps from 1,548 to 10,000. So that that's that's a big classification um, sort of segment there. So you would mess about, but that, that's not the point. Um, so here it's all um, calculated now by polygon. So when I click on them, I I get those. So for later execution, um, one final thing to say about this is that you could go to advance and copy um, these these settings and um, sort of run them back in so if I if I uh, let's say this so, so I can copy as JSON I can copy as Python com command I can copy as a, a QGIS command um, so to Python you may want to attach it to a button for example and just prompt the user all that sort of thing um, or, or just override um, but Anyway, so if we if we run this, open this up again, 
it, you see it's all set from there. Um, it's all defaulted, but if I go to paste settings, you see, it then brings it all back, including all the fields and stuff. So that's a, g a good thing to remember because I was just dragging this off the window so it wasn't lost sort of thing. Um, but, but you can paste settings and um, bring them back. Anyway, so I hope you find that useful. Um, and uh, there'll be sort of more on this sort of kind of thing in, in, in the future. Thanks.